Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and you're watching my Monday series currently that I am doing on my single barrel bourbons. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Baker's Seven. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that these are part of my single barrel bourbon flight fights as well. So everything that was in part one and part two is going to be reviewed along with a couple of other bourbons that I have that didn't make it into the flights, but they're in my collection and they're my single barrels. Let's go ahead and pour this nose it taste to talk about it. And if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna give this thing a score. So Baker's Seven is a single barrel. It's coming in at 107 proof. This current version of the Baker Seven is age stated and that's right here on the label. Mine's coming in at eight years, seven months of age. It was barreled in February of 2014 and it's coming out of warehouse CL-1. There's a mash bill of 77% corn, 13% rye, and 10% malted barley. This is a Kentucky straight bourbon, and it's coming out of the Jim Beam Distillery, 750 milliliter bottle. And at the time that I paid for this, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I paid $57.99. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the nose. And just like always, even before I bring it up to my nose, I'm getting some sweetness along with a little bit of nuttiness, which is strange. I think this bourbon was lost in the flight that I did with the Gem of Kentucky and the uh, Old Forester Master Distiller selected their single barrels. I think those two were such an overpowering bottle that I think this one got a little bit hidden in the mix. So it's always interesting to taste these things individually rather than in a flight. So like I mentioned, there is a little bit of nuttiness along with a cherry sweetness. Yeah, brown sugar, caramel, vanilla, all those standard bourbon notes that you usually get. There is a touch of spice, but I would say the dominant note is gonna be the peanut dusty shell, along with that cherry, vanilla, and brown sugar. All right, let's go ahead and get it on the palate, see what I think. I mean, taking a look at the legs, it's pretty thick. All right, let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Yeah, that's up front dusty peanut shells. There's a pretty heavy cinnamon and pepper note, so that would be a little bit spicy. There's a good amount of oak and barrel char. Not getting much of a sweetness on the palate than I did on the nose. That cherry note is completely absent. I would say there's there, there is a good amount of brown sugar. Not a lot, but there's enough in there to, to kind of tell you that there is a little bit of a sweetness there. Maybe that touch of vanilla a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of caramel. Much different on the palate than on the nose, that's for sure. As it rests or sits on my palate, I would say that the finish is medium to long. And the more that it sits, the more oak and more barrel influence that I'm actually getting. Maybe it's that char, maybe it's the barrel tannins, but it does stick around a little bit. I recently picked up the Knob Creek 18, and this is reminding me a lot of the oak notes that I'm getting in the Knob Creek 18. But you can't always trust that first sip, so let's get that second sip in and see if I can pull anything else out of this or see if it changed a little bit. Second sip, oak, pepper, cinnamon, brown sugar, caramel, vanilla. Very, very slight amount of cherry now is coming through there. That proof is spot on 107, 107 proof. That's really good. It's lighting me up a little bit, knows that it's there, but it's not overwhelming my palate and I'm not picking up that ABV spice it's definitely going to be a cinnamon and pepper spice that I'm getting, not ABV. I'm surprised on how much oak I'm actually picking up in the glass. I'm not necessarily a big oak fan, and this is just getting to the point where it could be a little bit over oaked for my for my taste, but it's, it's right there. And I mentioned the Knob Creek 18, for my taste and my palate, there's definitely a lot of oak but the oak notes that I'm getting are very similar in these two. Knob Creek 18, that oak is pretty much drying my tongue out. This is getting to that point, but it's not quite drying it out. And just like that first sip, now that finish is tending to be quite long. I don't say, I wouldn't say that this is a medium finish. It, it lingers, it sticks around, it lets you know that it's there especially with that oak and the oak tan and the barrel char. All right, so what I'm gonna do is add a couple of drops of water to this. Let it sit for a little bit while I talk about Baker 7, Jim Beam, maybe where the Baker's name came from. After the water has done its thing, I'll give it one last nose, one last sip, 
and then I'll let you know what I think of it as far as a score. Name that straw. <laughs> I have a couple of straws here. Where did this straw come from? So the information that I got from Baker's 7. The name Baker's is actually coming from Jim Beam's grand nephew, Baker Beam. And I don't know about you, but I'm always curious on how whiskeys get their names. And in this case, we got Baker's. I'm also interested in the history of this line. And apparently when this first came out, it was not a single barrel offering. It was actually batch. It was a small batch production. I think somewhere around 200 barrels were involved in this blend. And then they switched over from the small batch production to a single barrel in 2019. And if I'm not mistaken, Baker's has an, an additional release, the Baker's 13. And I'm not exactly positive if Baker's 13 is a single barrel or not. I have a sneaking suspicion that it is a single barrel, but let me know in the comments down below if it is a single barrel or not. And because these are single barrel releases, you are going to have a variation within the product itself or within the single barrel that you're getting it from. And Baker's seven, when it first came out, was usually aged seven years. And now that's not really always necessarily the case. They usually have something anywhere from seven, eight, nine, or maybe even 10 years old. Let me know again in the comments down below if you have a bottle of Baker seven, what is the oldest bottle that you've actually seen from Baker 7? And if you have it, what do you think of it? And also do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. Like, subscribe, share, turn on that bell notification because I produce videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the last little bit of information here, Jim Beam was actually founded in 1795 by Jim Beam, and they have multiple expressions within their lineup or from the distillery. Obviously, they have Jim Beam, they have Basil Hayden, they have Bakers, they have Knob Creek, and then they also have Bookers. And one of the things, one of those common flavor profiles that you get in distilleries, Jim Beam usually will typically have a peanut, dusty peanut, nutty kind of profile. So if you're into that kind of profile, I think there are multiple options that you get from Jim Beam. You just have to find one that suits your proof point and then go with it. Basil Hayden seems to be the lower proof point. I think the Knob Creeks are around 100, but there are some certain single barrel selections that are about 120. Baker's hits at around 107. And I think the highest one or the higher one is going to end up being the Booker's. And those are usually 120 plus. If you are a fan of Jim Beam, let me know in the comments down below which product is your favorite, or do you just jump around and just like Jim Beam in general? All right, so with that, let's go ahead and coat the glass. Let's nose it, taste it, and give it a score. Yeah, that's amazing how much cherry I'm actually getting on the nose, and it's completely absent from the palate. The dusty peanut note is now more of a peanut butter than a dusty peanut. I still get a good amount of cinnamon and pepper, Brown sugar, vanilla, and caramel are in there as well. I'm surprised on how vibrant it is in the glass as opposed to when I had this in the flight. All right, let's get it on the palate. Spice up front, lots of oak. The water tamed down the oak that I was getting, not as drying anymore. I have a good amount of tannin on the side of the tongue, not overboard. That barrel char is still coming through. Vanilla, caramel, brown sugar, pepper, cinnamon, all that's there. I wouldn't say that this develops very much from the arrival to the mid palate to the finish. I think it's pretty consistent all the way around. And based on what I had in this glass over the couple of sips, I would not say that this is sharp in any way. I really do like the proof point and I'm not getting an ABV spice. I don't think the whiskey itself is getting lost because of how hot it's drinking, because it's not drinking hot at all. You can actually pull out the flavors within the glass, and I, and I like that quite a bit. It's almost like when you eat spicy food, if the spicy food is too spicy, you just get overloaded with heat and you lose the nuances of the food. But if there's a good amount of spice in the food and you can still taste it, that's a good thing. I get the same thing from this. The spice is there, but it's a spice from the whiskey and not spice from the ABV. All right, let's move on to the score. If you are new to the channel and you're not familiar with my scoring system, I score everything out of five stars. I like this quite a bit. I don't think it's gonna be quite hitting four, but I will be giving this a 3.75. I don't think I can go any higher than 3.75 just because of the flavor profile 
doesn't really change much. I wouldn't say that this evolves over time. I don't think that the first sip to the second to the third has changed at all. It's pretty consistent with the oak, the spice, the cinnamon, the pepper, vanilla, brown sugar, caramel. Again, the proof point is spot on. So I'm gonna give this 375. For the 10th time, do me a favor, let me know in the comments down below where you would put this Baker 7 if you own one or if you've had one. And that's gonna conclude this video. So wherever you're at in your journey, I hope you're enjoying it. And until the next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye.